Yeah. Um, I think there were a couple times, because I saw the comment, too, where they said you were, like, cutting me off or whatever. I think there was, like, one or two times where I was, like, and I, but I stopped you and was like, yo, let me make the point. Yeah, yeah. Because you're, like, interjecting before I finish the idea, but uh, overall, dude, I don't think we need to change anything. Cool. Sounds good. I also think a lot of the audience, are these on? No. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the audience was you. Like, we had our one hater. Uh, well, I had a hater. Uh, yeah, that kid can fucking take a lap. He can absolutely take a lap. Uh, Nick is not a vibe, whatever, blah, 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 whatever, dude. Yeah, you're not a vibe. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of weird coming to a comment section and, and dropping it. Hey, whatever. Um, like and that. then some people were saying we were talking over each other, but that is... Yeah, they said I was breathing into the mic. <laughs> too loud. And we were like, fucking Mr. we were doing this, over we were here. Doing this yeah. over on the table. But we got a bit of a different setup today. It's a little bit more upright. Yeah, I like um, it. That's and good. I'm, and I'm fucking juiced up. The lighting's better. We the fixed the audio. Better. So I've been sun maxing my fucking <laughs> ass off. Little house kratom tea for the road. Nice. Yeah. Nice. We're back. Amazing. So, yeah, this is episode two of oh. the associates. Um, just the associates. There's no podcast at the end there. We're we're a brand. We're not a podcast. <laughs> <coughs> I'm a businessman. Uh, <laughs> um, Let's talk about yeah. Business. So welcome, welcome, yeah, welcome back. Uh, first episode, as of right now, we dropped it yesterday, last night. Hasn't even been 24 hours yet. I think we're at 1.8k views. Nice. Uh, we gained like 200 subscribers on the channel, so that's c- pretty Very cool. Cozy. Um, good, really good start. And our next, and I'm looking a little bit at it on the board, is our next episode. We we're going to talk about business. And you put up on your story, uh, you know, asking people for feedback, asking people for what do they want to hear about business. We got stuff about e-com, clients, Instagram, monetizing Bro, your social yeah. media, whole, whole broad, lot of stuff. Like all across the board. Make sure you're talking to your mic. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. You can even raise it up a little yes. bit. Oh, you can? Wow. Holy shit. Right there. Life changing. Yeah. Animation. There we go. We're not going to cut this out either. Oh, not down. Up. Oh, there you go. That's maxed out. There you go. Max it out. Nice. And raise it up. Tilt it. There you go. I'll try to just hunch back a notification. Nice, nice. Shit. Cool, cool, cool. So a lot of people were talking, you know, or asking different questions about what we've done. I think what we'll start with is really our backgrounds in business. Um, a lot of people really don't know. People know you for body optic. People know you for fitness, mm-hmm. but they don't know you for all the agency stuff, the door to door stuff, the working at a, a fitness training stuff. They don't know you for the working for someone really big in agency ecom. And I think you should mention that name. I know you you're really kind of. It just seems I don't know. But I think you should mention it because it's a huge social proof piece that a lot of people would recognize and be like, oh wait, you worked for him doing that. That's that's pretty sick. Um, and and I've done a lot of stuff that I don't talk about either. Yeah. And every time we have these conversations, things just come up and we, we add things, you know. So um, where where do you think we should start? Do you think we should start at the beginning of, like, when we were first jumping into business? Yeah. I think it's a... So I think, like, I think we should start with that kind of just, like, brief background um, and just kind of explain what we've, done, what we've done. And then I think especially for this episode, because realistically, man, like... Uh, And it was really funny because we were having the conversation of, like, with our new offer, how do we get it to, like, scale, like, big boy shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really funny because I don't even think, like, going into the intricacy and complexity of that for for a podcast. I mean, we can at some point, but I think it'd be much more valuable. Because if you think about what a beginner is, like, anything up until, like, 200 grand a month is basically a beginner or 100 grand a month. I Okay, I would classify a beginner as 0 to 20. 0 to 50. I think that's beginner but, level. But in the terms of doing business, it's like it, what, what really changes from business, 50 to 100? Nothing. Business overall, but a lot changes from 0 to 10, 0 to 20, 0 to 50. Fair enough. The only thing that really changes, though, to the next level is like employees, I would say. Systems of course, but it's a different structure because at the beginning, you have to learn how to actually come up with an idea and put that idea into practice and make that successful. Whereas once you're at the point of hiring employees, you already have some sort of system there. You already have something that's working. So I think that's really the the line. Do you have something that's working or do you not have something that's working? It may not even be a money line, right? Because you could maybe make 200K a month on your own in sales. Yeah. Uh, 
the, yeah, that's it, true. It's really a difference of where am I at in terms of do I have employees? Am I building a system or am I still figuring that out? My, my whole point, though, is like I don't think, at least for this one, we should go into like the super complexities Agreed. of scale. Let's, or, let's jump into first our stories. Stories and then just like how and we then think about what, these things. And then what would a beginner do or what would I do as a beginner? Knowing what I know now. Right. What, what would I tell if I had a little brother? Yeah. What would I tell my little brother to do if he was 17 years old, just leaving high school, so true. and he wanted to get into business? Yeah. I think that's the, the frame. Uh, so let's jump into the story first. You want to run it? You want me to run it? I want you to go. I'm going to ask you, where were you when you're like, I don't want to take the traditional path. Yeah. I want to go into business of some sort. And how did that manifest itself? So, um, I mean, and I also, it's funny looking back on it, and I think this is a really key thing that, um, you know, a lot of life is kind of returning to who you were when you were a kid before you had all these like societal things like took over you in a bit. And so I think I always had like this, and you talk about playing with Legos all the time. Like it was really just returning to like who I actually am or, or starting to. Um, but so I was in college um, playing college football. I did a year of mechanical engineering on like a biomed path. So I was also taking, you know, like the life sciences on a pre-med track um, and just playing, you know, I played a small F FCS school of Valparaiso um, playing football and flying for games and doing that. It's like, pff, bro, they don't mix at all. It fucking sucked. Um, and so I switched from engineering. I also actually transferred after a year of football um, to a smaller school in Ohio and was just studying basically like just the life sciences, like almost like on a PT med school track. So either like apply to med school, become a doctor, and there was a lot of things, and I don't know, I don't, I don't want to dive like crazy deep into the backstory of it all, but just, uh, man, I just realized like that path, like what was the best case scenario in either engineering or, you know, becoming a doctor is like 150 grand a year, which granted now looking back on it, you could own a practice and still be a business owner within the confines of that. You could own an engineering firm, but like waiting so long to have the things that I wanted I hated the prospect of it. Like med school, wait, be another eight years in school or engineering, another fucking four. Or like it was just seemed like bullshit. I wanted it now. I wanted the freedom. I wanted the money, mm -hmm. really the freedom, but money is cool too. So what made you make that, that leap? Um, what was the breaking point? Just like, I just realized, especially too with, it was kind of like a college thing as well. I realized that like playing the status game of, you know, like fraternity or like this or that or whatever, it just seemed like bullshit and stupid. It's, it's a, it's almost I'm, like a, a status in a certain area. In a small but pond. It, right. And then you get out of that pond, you graduate, it's gone. And I, and honestly, dude, I didn't even care about that status. You know, I wanted to like actually be somebody um, and just got fed up with schoolwork. I got super stoned one night. It was just like, just decided to just rip it like pure faith. I had, I had kind of reworked what I was consuming at that point. So I unfollowed like all the stupid shit on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, and started following like business theme pages. It's interesting enough. because I think you followed a couple of the ones that I owned. Yeah. For a long time. Yeah. Um, the, so I started following those. I started following like this con conspiracy pages, all that kind of shit. Um, and man, I just decided to say like, fuck it. Like, I believe I can make something happen from nothing. I knew, and I also saw uh, one of like the 17 year old e-com drop shipping ads. And I was just looking at it and like, I was a fucking quant student and like, I'm really smart to not being a dick bag about it. But you know, like in every objective metric have always been really smart. Like showed up, eight, showed up to take the ACT four hours of sleep, hung over 34, right? Like or 33 or whatever. I ended up getting 34, but um, nice. same Con way congrats in school. yeah thanks yeah. same way in school just like good grades um never doing homework but i just roll in sleepy as fuck like ace the test still get a b because i, I, never I wasn't homework. i wasn't always like lay like i did homework in study halls or whatever i wasn't really doing homework at home but 
and I would always, yeah, it's sim- very similar just where like, I would just like do it and it would just like happen. I get go a good to school grade and, and you listen to the shit when you're actually there and then you remember it because you heard it and then you just repeat it. Boom, it's done. Super easy. Simple. Right? Um, so I saw that dropshipping ad and I also had loved, I'd loved like health and fitness with my experience as an athlete and, you know, my personal struggles. I mentioned on the first episode, I think, of having Graves' disease. Like I was down that rabbit hole hard. Mm-hmm. And so I knew I wanted to do e com. I knew I wanted to um, pursue fitness in some capacity. What what year is this, by the way? Twenty eighteen. Yeah. This is twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Okay. So this is a year after I did it. Yeah, late twenty eighteen. Got you. Um, okay. I was finishing up my third semester of real college. I had done my last semester of high school was I was technically a college student, so technically four, but three since I actually graduated high school. Um, But yeah, man, so I did that and literally like I called my parents. They're like, yo, this is like grandparents are my family is super big on education, right? Grandparents are like, what? My dad's like, dude, you're fucking idiot. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. And and they were kind of called their bluff too. my dad was like, all right, well, if you're going to do that, like, you know, he, he wanted me to stay in school. Like my friends were calling our coaches, telling them I'm like going fucking crazy and losing my mind. They called the counselor on me and showed up at my door. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Like I do not need or wow. want to talk. That's to actually you. wild. Yeah. It, uh, and, and it just like shook out. My dad was like, yo, like if you're going to do that, like you're not coming home. Like if you're going to quit on, cause I had most of it paid for too, which is school, you know, scholarship yep. stuff. Um, he's like, yo, you're not staying at home. So you just felt you were wasting your time. Yeah. Playing a game that I didn't want to play. Like the outcome of winning that game didn't matter to me. So why was I doing it? I was the same exact way, you know? And I've told you this before and I think we should tell these stories kind of chronologically. Yeah. So, Um, so yeah, cause you were a year before me, right? So I was was a year before and it was 2017 fall of 2017. Um, I graduated in 2017 from high school, early 2017, wasted that summer kind of just playing golf not a waste like, though. not a waste but like i was just doing whatever yeah it wasn't really productive and then i was like okay time to go to school was since like i got there like i didn't remember this but my mom told me you were always kind of questioning if you had to go or not and da, 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 whatever and so from the beginning apparently i just mm, wasn't really sold on it mm-hmm. and i'd known I had known because I was like a little bit deep into like the conspiracy stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm like a younger kid. I'm like 15 watching Alex Jones on YouTube, yeah. right? Which is hilarious. But as a 15 year old kid, like in high school, like getting red pilled, whatever. Yeah. And uh, I, I was like, oh, all these liberals at, at college. I'm gonna have to deal <laughs> with this and that. And I wasn't really looking forward to it. So, but I get there, and the first month there, I'm just like, this is not it. I just knew after that first month and that's really where it starts to became like a problem in my mind mm-hmm. of I am stuck here. I don't like it. How do I get out? This is not the environment for me. How am I going to do four years here? Yeah. So about another month through, I really was just like, okay, I'm leaving. And looking back now, I could have just left like that, yeah. but it, it was so ingrained in me. And I think it's so ingrained in so many kids leaving college or leaving high school, that they have to go to college. And it's the thing to do. Yeah. And it's not. It really isn't the thing to do. It's the probably, in a lot of cases, probably the it's, dumbest decision. It's the you worst thing you can do. But And I'm I, not, like, totally, I think there's cases for it, for sure. For sure. Like, most, the average kid goes to college so that they can basically delay becoming an adult for four more years and party. And, and, I'm, and I'm about, and like, that, people should go and party and get that. Yes. But also, dude, you could go get a trade job and, like, party too and party too and And meet plenty of people or make money and go actually actually party rather than go to some dusty ass college whatever yeah Yeah. in a dirty basement in a frat whatever so that on that note what i say all the time is i felt i was getting four years ahead of where i would be Mm -hmm. and that's true uh about a year ago is when i would have graduated yeah and i look at it now and everyone that graduated either went to grad school they're trying to get a job still, or they got a job. And it's like, dude, the job that they're making, and this is not to look down on anyone, mm-hmm. but it's like, I would have been in that same position of I'm making X amount per year, and now we make that per month. Yeah. And it's it's not me looking down on anyone. It's not really me 
bragging or anything. It's just I would have been in that same position if well, I it, didn't it, make the the leap to leave. Yeah, and I don't think it comes off as bragging because you, I talk to a lot of those people and they're like not happy with the situation. No, you know? they're, they're not happy they at don't all. Love what they're doing in most cases. Some of them do. Why? Why is it that I hear stories all the time of? The girl that went to college, and this is a whole other topic of should girls even go to college and get an education? <laughs> Short answer, no. <laughs> but um, I, I, well, we are talking about business, yeah, assets, whatever. <laughs> uh, but try not to fed post too uh, hard on this one. Different podcast, the yeah, woman, the yeah, woman we'll, podcast, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. But um, I, you know, I, I hear stories of this girl went to college or this guy went to college. And they went and got a degree, and then they went and got their MBA, and they still don't know what they want to do. It's like, why are you spending all of this money to go get this education that you're not doing anything with? You just went and spent 150k, mm-hmm. went in debt, and you don't know how you're gonna pay it back. Yeah. You don't have a plan for your future, and you're 24 years old. You don't really have a skill set. You're 24 years old. You're halfway through your 20s, and you don't have a skill set. You don't know where you're going. It's so that's that's what I was trying to avoid, and I think that's what you were trying to avoid as well. Yeah. And that's really what kicked it off for us. Yeah, and um, like for me, it was too like, kind of, and you talk about this like the pain of not being like bro i want i I, i've always known like i've always been an outwardly confident person and an same and i've had moments where that's deteriorated and i had to learn how to like organically build it back up right but i've always kind of had this like you know just a little bit of cockiness and even when it gets even when it gets deteriorated like that you know when i was selling cars Mm -hmm. and that, that leads me into the next part when i dropped out but when it gets deteriorated like that when i my confidence was deteriorated there it always bounces back within like a month and, and then you're you're fine we do we always choose to do the hard things that are fulfilling and push um, through and push through yeah but so i've always had that like kind of swag or whatever and i just like wanted to be the fucking man and i knew that doing that's not gonna make me the man mm-hmm. and so i was like screw it so you went to florida so yeah so my parents actually knows over there uh or Noah, our sales guy, sales manager. Um, he I actually called him and because uh, everybody was like, think I'm freaking out. Like my dad's like, yo, you're not going to. You and Noah go. was your your best friend from high school uh, or no, at that point, he wasn't my best friend. Um, we got closer, like tighter after we, we were friends. Okay. I wouldn't say he was like my best friend. So you, you called him. Um, I called him. Because my dad was like, yo, you can't stay here. Like, you got to figure it out if that's what you're going to do. And mind you, this is like t- one to two weeks before Christmas. So I was like, all right, bet. Fuck it. Like, booked a hotel, booked a flight next day, one way to Florida with like $1,700 to my name and one bag and just like left everything. It was like, fuck it. Like, let's get it. And kind of called his bluff. Um, he just was wanted me to like be safe, whatever. And once I actually explained to him what – I was wanted to do and why I wanted to do it. Um, he was like, yo, this is sweet, actually. He was actually very supportive once we actually sat down and I told him, yo, dad, I really think that this is worthless and the opportunity that the internet provides is way bigger. I had a similar conversation. And he with, just like was down with it. I love it. After that. so Do you think that played a big role once he was down with it in getting through any hardships or like, do you think it made the process easier? Um. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like there were times, um, and everybody talks about like self-made. Like there, it was funny. I didn't accept anything from my parents for maybe like a year or a year and a half. What do you mean by that? Like there was there were times when him being supportive of what I was doing was helpful, right? Like the first year, I wanted to like pay for everything myself. You know, I didn't want any money. He didn't give me any money. I went and got jobs and figured it out and kind of hustled through it. But then, like, once I had shit working, once I got the job offer to move to, to Boca, you know, like, oh, hey, dude, I, I want to move here. I'm going to have this salary. Like, can you help me out with security deposit? Like, shit like that. Like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. and helpful. Um, and then, what, what was your question again, too? I want to make sure I'm answering it well. Oh, uh, you went Did to you, Florida. Do I think it helped? Yeah, do you think it helped? Yeah, I mean, it's it definitely helps um because i would say it helped me a lot yeah like because my parents were really the two main people that supported obviously my sister too she didn't really understand yeah. she was younger but 
no one else. No one else really got it. It's like, oh, we'll be happy for you. Do what you want. It's just my dad that did. Everyone else gotcha. in my family, like, I still have people in my family that ask me today if I'm going back to college. I'm like, yeah, right, dude. You can, <laughs> I'll like, I'll be like, smoking <laughs> crack if you think I'm coming back. I was telling you this. I'll randomly, you know, just be back home visiting or whatever, and I'll see someone I know, like a teacher from high school or something random like that. It's like, oh, you're going to take some classes at the local community college? And it's like, dude, what? Why yeah. would I waste if my time? I'm going to burn money, I would do it at the club, <laughs> not at fucking English class. Probably learn more there, too. Straight up. But so so I, I ended up coming home for Christmas, right? And just, like, I, dr- I did drop out. Um, got Fs in, like, three or four out of my classes. Like, maybe one I got, like, a C or nice. something. I don't know. Um, dropped out. Went home. I worked at a ski resort in my hometown. Like, that was what I did on breaks in the winter. Um so did that for like maybe three weeks just to like save up some money, like New Year's with my friends, whatever. And then just packed everything into my Honda Accord and whipped it down to Florida. I picked Florida simply because it's sunny. And I picked Clearwater, Florida, simply because I found at that point Ben Patrick when he was really small. And I liked what he was doing training wise. Knees over toes guy, right? Yeah. And I liked what he was doing training wise. And I wanted to work out there. That was it. I wanted to work out in his gym and do this stuff, right? So that's what I did and moved down. Um, yeah, like I, that was like the first order of business as I, well, for one, I found an apartment on Craigslist or a room for rent on Craigslist. The guy ended up being an alcoholic and he wasn't paying the rent and I got evicted. That was like a huge stressor. Um, but I found this super cheap room to rent from this like just 32 year old dork English teacher. You end up quitting his job. He had like a whole, it was it's, a whole thing. It's always an English teacher, isn't it? <laughs> and I actually have some English teacher that I really like um, from, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but so I moved down there. I signed up for the gym membership day one there. And then just like started getting odd jobs. And I'm like, at this point, I'm buying a shitload of courses. I'm trying different things. Um, I ended up getting a job at a telemarketing center, cold calling 400 businesses a day to try to scam them on their electricity. Oh my God. Like they were, Hey, we can save you money on your electricity bill. Like just dialing, dialing, dialing. It was the most awful place of all time. So that went bad. I was going to ask how that went. Yeah. It was fucking terrible. I had like, Did I was teach you anything. Did I was teach carnivore you there and all the people were like fat and eating donuts telling me I'm going to die of heart attack. And I mean, <laughs> I'm like 205 shredded to the bone. Did, did that teach you anything? Did, do you still carry any of those practices in business today? I mean, it was like probably helpful to just learn how to just like do this stuff and get rejected. Right. Cause car sales, I, I would equate it like that set the foundation for me yeah. of, cause I drop out. Mm-hmm. A week later, I get a job selling cars. Took a week off. Cool. Week later, I get a job selling cars. Local dealership, Chevys. Uh, that was crazy for an 18-year-old. I'm 18, pitching cars to grandparents and older people that are you know, like my parents' age. Yeah. And that was... I learned the specifics of how people think like the psychology of how does someone buy a car right and or buy anything for that matter and i think i especially picked the right industry to learn because you'll get everyone walking into it to a dealership and that was a year of ups and downs and like did that for a year did that for a year while i was starting the internet business yeah so i would i would wake up and it would be you know, 6 a.m., wake up at 6 a.m., and I would work for three hours on the, the internet business, eat my breakfast, whatever, mm-hmm. go to go to work like 9, 10. There's different times you could go in, yep. but go to like 9 or 10, and I was there, showroom floor, trying to call people, filling out like postcards, mailing them out, like trying to get leads any way possible. At the time, I was an idiot. I should have just ran paid ads. But but I was, you know, I was grinding that out and, and all day. And then I would go to the gym and I would go back and then I would spend another three hours on the internet business at night. So let's talk about that. Um, and then I'll kind of take my yeah, yeah, of course. bit in an expedited story. A little bit more expedited. I get into too much detail on these. Um, so you'd say internet business. So walk yeah. us through that. You drop out October 2017. Drop out you end of October. Cars. So okay. first week in November, I get the job cool. and I start training. They give me some little pay or whatever, okay. like making like 
three hundred bucks a week okay. to to train and learn. Uh, then I start selling at the end of November. From November to February, while I'm selling, and mind you, I wasn't amazing because I'm an 18 year old kid, and most of the people coming into a Chevy dealership at that time are previous customers of all the people that have been selling there for 10 to 30 years. Yeah. So everyone that walks in, it's like, hey, like I'm Nick. How you doing? I can help you. No, no, no. We're working with what's his name over there. Oh, okay. So that was tough. That was definitely tough. But while I'm so from November to February, it's just that. But I'm researching. I'm researching the whole time. What did you ever buy any courses or anything like that? Yeah, I bought a course from one YouTube guy. Okay. Um, That's it. Just one. Just one. I bought so many. I I did that, and then I bought like a one-on-one training or whatever. But nothing crazy. I didn't really. I was never into buying courses. I always was about figuring out myself, and I'm glad because that really led me to a lot of trials trial and error mm-hmm. and it, it helped me learn a lot but so i'm there and i'm testing 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 february i'm like okay it's time i'm gonna do drop shipping it's gonna be super successful <laughs> so i get my llc or whatever because i think that's important and it, i think it is important to have um some kind of llc just to collect the money separately um at least for me but you do that after you collect the money whatever um so so I'm there and uh, I'm doing that and it's just not working all summer all summer 2018 spring to summer 2018 not working nothing's working it's I'm making sales but I'm negative uh, it's just not good it wasn't it wasn't good overall mm-hmm. uh, but I learned a lot I learned uh, sourcing products how to build a Shopify store Photoshop all sorts of email all sorts of different things that and that was like that plus the car sales of like selling and people skills built a really, really strong foundation for business. And yeah. I think that's why I have progressed to the point I've progressed today because it compressed, you know, if I graduated and I'm 23 years old and I get shoved into a corporate job, what is it going to, a bunch of skills that I'm, you know, I'm, it's just a bunch of, aren't even skills, yeah, it's just like a bunch of just random stuff like and you're Zoom not, meetings about Zoom meetings, yeah, and like it's, emails about the Zoom meeting, about the Zoom meeting. Exactly. You're not really learning too much. You're just kind of there, Excel monkey. existing, <laughs> Excel <laughs> monkey. <laughs> yeah, for real. So I compressed, I would say five years of, you know, five, 10 years of whatever experience into about six months, yeah. nine months. And I'm just there because I'm grinding. I'm six hours a day on the business, eight hours a day at so work. And you, Did you talk about the transition from Shopify to... I'm about to. Okay. So from from there, so I'm six hours a day Shopify, mm-hmm. eight hours a day sales. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm sending all this money to these IG pages to promote my products that I'm negative on. So why don't I just become the IG pages and collect all the money and promote my own products? So that's what I did. I started a dog niche, luxury niche, whatever, whatever. Found the business niche. I was like, you know what? I'm going to drop $200 in ad spend into this. Shout outs. Cool. Brand new at the time. The business niche, entrepreneur niche was. Four months later, 100K followers. Printing. 5, 10K a month. And at that like point, that. was it all you? It was all me at that so time. You just made, you made all the content. You put all it the It was just up. me. I was under my desk. Just like this. At the, at the dealership. I was under my desk over here. And... I was in the engagement groups three, four times a day, posting, posting, posting on the one page that I had at the time. Cool. And I finally quit uh, just about a year after in November um, of 18. And then I went growing IG pages full time. And that, that's how that happened. Uh, what was the – now, I want to get back to you because yeah. I think the telemarketing for you is similar to the car sales. No, and I, it, I But I would also – because I also know the second part of your story, which is – Jumping into more of the agency stuff well, and selling a, services. There's in, a lot of time in between. So let me, okay. let me, I'll give you the timeline more condensed, right? Yeah. So I did the the telemarketing bullshit for like three weeks before I was like, three, four weeks maybe, before I was like, okay, like I dropped out of school to avoid being in these situations that were just like dead end. So why am I putting myself in one again just to make, you know, the, the three grand a month that'll pay my rent, or which I my rent was much less than that then. But yep. Um, to pay my bills, pay for food. Food was my biz- biggest expense always, um, <laughs> which is still true. I know that well because you go to the – every time we're at the grocery store together, Whole Foods is the perfect example. Oh, my God, what's this? Oh, hey. And the cart goes from, yeah, we're just going to get some eggs and some beef to, 
three bottles of some random drink yeah. and this pesto and whatever that you decide to add. I, I, I like eating well. What can I say? I have it's cool. Tendencies. It's cool. It's just funny. I'm an aristocrat. Anyway, um, so I did that for like three or four weeks. And I was like, dude, why am I doing this? This is stupid. Um, looked around at other jobs. And then I actually got a job um, like driving around de- delivering Italian food. Oh, you told me um, this. And that was fun. Like it was – I made a lot of good money like – genuinely with tips um would take home 100 200 cash a night super cozy i was in the whip listening to like uh at this point i was like i would listen to like nate schmidt's live shows which is funny because him and i are like friends now um but i would listen to his stuff or just like random shit consuming content like religiously i had bought a few courses um and so so this is while i'm delivering pizza and then I start. I'm. At, I offered to help Ben. He's a Rotos guy mm-hmm. for free at his gym. They when they had a physical gym, um, so I was like working with their football team. They trained um, and like coaching them, um, helping them with all their workouts, whatever. Um, doing some weekends like shifts at the gym for free, and then did that for like a month, maybe like a month and a half or whatever. Um, I think they started paying me for the weekends. Another couple more weeks go by, and they're like, yo, do you want to work full-time? And so then I transitioned to fully being a personal trainer and helping them with their online stuff as it was starting. Um, I ran a women's class, kids' class, whatever. So I'm doing personal training, um, which I would, like, go door-to-door and pitch businesses on (laughs) me personally training them. Like, yo, our shit's great. You should do it. Obviously, it was, like, more Did you sell anybody? Um, I think like a couple people came in. I printed a long form sales letter and printed out 200 of them and took them door to door and just like ran them through the spiel. Okay. Yo, we can fix your knees. Like we can fix your shoulders. We can fix your back. Um, and during that too, like this whole time I'm consuming all the content, like I'm kind of lurking on, on, on all the internet spaces, bought some courses, bought some coaching, bought some groups, like whatever. And I'm just trying things. And I tried the e-com stuff too. Uh, right when I like when I was still telemarketing, I tried a, a few drop shipping stores. Like, what lost so much money in ads uh, or shout outs then? Because that's probably like, it. Probably felt like so much money at the time. Yeah, now it's like it's whatever. Yeah, it's food. A waste of a complete like money I would spend on a daily basis. But so I tried the ads, um, and then I realized that holy shit, like e-commerce takes a lot of capital, and I'm broke. So why am I doing that? found like the service based client stuff. Um, and I remember I closed a few deals. I ran Facebook ads for a guy who had a physical product that I knew or that I met in the city of Clearwater. Um, I did email marketing for like, I closed like two guys off DMS one, like a couple supplement people like fitness, whatever. Um, and then one of the guys who owned a smoke shop that I would go and buy CBD flour from on the weekends to smoke. Cause he's like, <laughs> yeah, it was just funny as fuck, but I ended up closing him on a deal, wrote him like a labor day promotion and it cranked. So he's paid me money. Nice. Um, and, and so that then I'm working the personal training I start doing like that service based stuff. And then I saw, um, like Jared, Jared gets posted, uh, I'm glad you finally mentioned his name Something, kind of publicly. Yeah, I don't know. In term, I think it's important. It like a big deal, but I, yeah. I think it's important. So he posted something at that point, and I, I at this point he's like the man, you know, like traveling. Wasn't all it second fastest growing Shopify store behind Kylie? Wasn't that because I feel like that was like a headline or something? That was yeah. That was like their market. Dude, it was fucking great VSL. Yeah. For their coaching course, whatever, like one of the best VSLs I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, it was like the second fastest. Went like zero to two mil in like two months, um, which is really, and he, and I'm seeing this, I'm seeing him traveling, um, like just seemed like a dope guy. And he posted something like, yo, I'm looking for help. Um, I want to, you know, I want somebody that's like young and wants to like learn and whatever. And I'm all over that. Like, yo dude, like this is, what do you need? Like I'm there. And he's like, Hey, can you send me, uh, an email or he was first like, are you close? And I was like, no, but I'll move. And he was like, cool, you want to send me an email? And I sent him, like, the most, like, big dick email of all time. It was fire, actually. Um, He's like, yeah, let's get on a call. Get on a call. He likes me. Like, a week or two later, there was a hurricane. How old are you at this time? 
20. And he's how old? 28. Okay, so he's been in the game. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, maybe, yeah, probably 20, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, um, and I'm 20. So he, like, likes me through all those pre-qualification steps. I drive down to meet him in person, and it's, like, good, and he hires me right on the spot. I'm basically, like, his just, like, assistant right hand whatever just doing whatever needs done um and that eventually grew into like a kind of a coo role but just doing a lot of different stuff i was selling um we we had had like internal stores so running e-commerce stores that he like owned we eventually built and became like a small just had a little piece of it, whatever. Um, but working with tons of clients, we had like 17 clients that I was managing that I sold in, or most of them at least. Um, I had a team of four developers in India. And, and where, what happened with it? I So we, we started doing really well. Like I, I started, this is now, fast forward, like I started working for him in like August, September 2019. So after like eight months of working for knees over that's guy. that's exactly when I started my agency, which is interesting. Yeah, but I wasn't it wasn't the agency yet. Okay, it was I just was working for him. I gotcha. was his assistant. Maybe like two or three months later, I blossomed into that like new role. That's like where the direction took. Um, and then like New Year's, I remember we had for like the business model we were running. We had a bunch of shit set to hit, and if it hit, we were gonna be giga successful, and if it didn't. We were gonna like we had to go back to the drawing board and it like ripped. We did like a big like I don't know like 50, he did I wasn't part or anyway, but it did like fifty or sixty grand that night. Yep. Right. And so we were like fuck. So then we just quadrupled down on it. Closed way more people. Set up systems. SOP'd everything. Start selling in clients. Create a whole process for it. Um, and like we, like I said at the peak probably. And this is then and then the pandemic started. And if you're doing e-com during the pandemic, it was like, fucking get the Brinks truck out, bro. Because no, everybody's at home. They all have Trump mm -hmm. bucks, and they have nothing to fucking do but buy shit. Yeah. And yeah. it was epic. It was so much fun. So it's interesting because I started the agency with my business partner, Gabe. Mm -hmm. We originally had tried to start an engagement group because we had both started to own and build IG pages in the yeah. space. We tried to start an automated engagement group. Realized we couldn't scale too high. It was too difficult, whatever. We had to code this and that. Mm -hmm. So we said, you know what? We're in the same space. Why don't we just start an agency? And it's, uh, th we had the same situation happen in 2020 where mm -hmm. we finally had like five clients. Yeah. And we're, we're pushing. We're good because we're just new to the agency game. So we don't really get it. We, we're not deep in business. Yeah. And looking back, if we just did a couple things different, we could have just, oh my God, we could have cleaned up. Like yeah. for real. But, we saw the same thing is when the the whatever happened you know the shutdowns lockdowns whatever things went crazy if you were in the internet business industry you were doing really well yes and so we were cr we were crushing it bro like i was like kind of i mean he was like obviously not like he was just giving me his network kind of and directing me and uh but I was like doing a lot of it and executing on a lot, all of it. If not mm -hmm. a lot of he it. had the blueprint, you had the execution. Yeah, exactly. Um, which is how things should go. Like you leverage of other course. people's time when you have capital. Um, but so we were hit. I mean, had a few like like four, five, like six figure months. Um, was just doing really well. And overall, I just kind of became. And it was, I think, the frame when you come in and start as someone's assistant. Like, it was, uh, I wanted more from what I was doing, but the frame was already kind of set, and it of just didn't align. Um, I also just, like, I realized doing this. So during this time, I start posting content, fitness content, because I'm bored. It's like I've, summer? Uh, I posted my first thread in, like, January, like, late January. Of so 2020? 2020. 2020. Okay. So I've been gotcha. post. I'm starting to post. I'm building like this brand, this persona, whatever. That's interesting because you also pretty much just started the agency stuff with him beginning of 2020 as well. Yeah. So I was just doing it for fun. Dead ass. Like just, I loved it. You know, yeah. I, I, I had, you only can work so many hours a day. And then like, what do you do the rest of that time? Especially mm -hmm. once you're now locked in. Like, dude, I had nothing to do but go on sunshine filled Lindy's and uh, <laughs> like lift there's nothing else to do for sure 
or go to the beach and just like think I was living alone. Like I didn't really know anybody cause I didn't really care to know that many people. Like I had friends that I'd met like Florida Atlantic kids or whatever media, but they just like, weren't on the same vibe. They weren't trying to do shit. I feel like that happens a lot with us. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I start posting all this stuff and finally get to the point. I had a, a year contract with him. I built up this huge, or not huge, but at this point it was like eight, nine, ten k on Twitter somewhere in that world. People are literally asking me for a product, like, "Yo, how can I? You know, do you have anything? Do you have like a product? Do you have this? Do you have that?" And I didn't want to keep doing what I was doing because I was burnt out. Um, I was doing a lot of it on my own, and I also just like felt like I wanted to build something more. Uh, of sub- of substance i guess like it made rather cash. than some like random econ product yeah whatever, just like i didn't that you're like not really emotionally attached to yeah that's why i struggle with econ too it's like not my thing i think that's why a lot of people didn't it's like it didn't do well in econ and didn't do well in drop shipping because it's 100 like, percent. like if it's like when i tried it i knew i was selling like somebody else's thing or, or a lot of times like bullshit or it doesn't right. have good logistics or it's just like you don't feel great about it and um, that's why I feel really cool about the clothing brand yeah. that we have. And we're not pushing ads for it right now, but the the brand's there. We're getting sales kind of every week, just organically, whatever. Yeah. But it's super cool because it's the people that we want to meet vibe with the brand. Yeah. So it's, it's super cool to actually sell us. I care about that mm-hmm. e-com side of things. And I also just didn't, I wanted to do something fitness again. Um, mm. And so we were going to do something together, but he had his software stuff and it was just, he just didn't have enough bandwidth. Um, so I was like, you know what? Like, um, he offered me to like sell for that. I didn't really, I don't know. I just wanted to do something more in line with the fitness, more passion. Um, and so I was like, all right, sweet. Like, I'm just going to rip it on my own. And that was a really interesting, like three weeks after I res- I was like resigned and then like just helping if anything was needed to be done in the transition. But, uh, that three weeks was like crazy. Cause it was like, okay, now I have pure freedom and it's like, I better make some shit happen or else I'm going to like be poor. It, it's a good thing star. and a bad thing to have that freedom. Oh, dude, I you was have so, all the time in the world, but you... I was so stressed out. You, I was well, drinking like two Celsius a day to try to build this course. <laughs> like my first product, the Limitless sure. Playbook. Dude, I was I was cranking cells and caffeine. Interesting. Because it was so uh, hard for me to like sit down and just bang out the work. Courses and, are some of the hardest things yeah. to make because I remember building our. And I the, wanted it to be great too. You yes, know? of course. I remember building the first course. It was after I got the IG page like 100k followers. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm gonna build a course on this and sell it to my audience and show yeah. them how I did it. And it was four days, five days straight. I was sleeping like four hours a night, yeah. but I was just like, I just need to get up and just no do it and sleep. finish it. You just gotta get it done though. And it was cool because that was like the first time I made actual money we were doing or i was doing it was just me like yeah. 300 dollars a day with that and i'm like oh my god i remember when it's I, real yeah dude when i dropped that shit i uh i went up to orlando to actually like like record like rap with some of my homies that one of them's a really good producer one of them's like an artist um so i went up to like make music with my boys and just like i was getting like drinking smoking like just teed up and and i'm looking at my phone and like money's rolling in and like <laughs> made it can make a couple grand in a day you're like shit bro like well it changes your pers- it changes your but perspective I, I had seen money like i had seen money like that you know like with the other stuff i'd done or with the people that i'd worked for but when it's on your own it hits way different and because it's yours because it's like you're you're that goes directly to like the chase checking you know and it just hits different uh but so yeah man then it it I did that, and then my lease was up, and then Kevin and I had been good friends mm-hmm. through that. We ended up partnering up. I ended up going to Tallahassee to just, like, live for a couple months, like, rented a house, whatever, um, leave there. And during that, like, we, I start doing some, like, service-based work again, start, like, selling, because I had built up all this experience selling our agency offer, and then I'm seeing people, like, realizing that you can close, like, just as a – kind of like a hired gun you know like a mercenary for other people who have offers and i'm like damn that's a really easy way to make money start doing that um i go to brazil so at this point then we start launching like actual coaching rather than courses for a fitness business and i pick up a couple of sales clients that i'm closing for they just have me on their calendar it's 
easy work for me because this is about a year ago yeah yeah like so you've had this offer for a year pretty much um i mean i had the first course like august the coaching i mean the coaching the coaching dropped we had some clients december 2020 but they were like dude we were charging like 200 bucks Mm. uh, or 400 bucks or whatever like we just didn't know what we were doing um and we wanted to do a good job um but so yeah it's been like a year and year and a half of that of that offer and so i sold for a bit and then i took a couple it turned in from like an, an agency whatever to just like me selling for various people on the side while i was building that for cash flow and then i was like yeah it just reached an inflection point um you know jake and i tried to do our our stint at, at private equity and then it, it just like we were trying to be way too ballsy um yep. and yeah, man, that brings us to present day for me. For sure. Least. And I'll, I'll kind of finish it up on my end. Where, you know, I went from the car sales and doing drop shipping and e com into the IG space, growing audiences and then growing audiences for personal brands. Mm-hmm. And we're still growing audiences for personal brands. And so what we do at our agency, we're still growing the pages. So that business has been it's about three and a half years straight That's of the dope. same same thing That's super cool. uh, from pages three and a half years two and a half years at, with the agency and I, dude it's not that long ago i was selling cars three and a half years ago yeah. that's really not that long things move quick but it really isn't that long ago dude, but it was, it's been yeah three and a, a half years now since yeah. i was Broke college, drop out in my car on the way to Florida. No nothing. Wild. I know nothing. It's wild. So anyone listening? Other than other than having like the fitness wherewithal, I'd been in that game for a while. I had those prerequisites, mm-hmm. but yeah, man. It's, uh, anyone listening to this can probably do the same. You know, if you if you found this. But let me let me finish and then we'll, we'll yeah, jump yeah. into that. Okay. Um, because like, that leads us to our second point that we kind of discussed. We want to talk about. Yeah. But so so I'm there. We we're doing that. Um. Two and a half years in the agency, three and a half years in pages. And now we've launched kind of coaching, which is what we help our clients do. We help our clients sell coaching. But now we're going to coach people on how to build their own personal brands because it's more scalable. We can help more people and we make more money selling a product like that. Link in description. Well, it's, but, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a really funny thing for me because for the longest time, uh, and I, I still don't think I would do it without your guys' results too. Yeah. backing me. Like I'm a very good marketer. I'm a very good salesman. I, I understand this stuff fundamentally. Like I know what the fuck I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Um, but I didn't want to touch that for the longest time because you, I don't know, you don't want to, you, you don't want to be made fun of or whatever. Like subconsciously, there's that's a really stigma. What it is. There's a stigma around it that you become like but a it, guru yeah. or whatever. But I believe the stigma is there it's because people will just do anything for the money in general. Mm-hmm. Whereas we are much different than that. We coach our clients on terms of don't do that with your personal well, me, brand. you, and Gabe, the three partners in it, mm-hmm. all have like four years of in the trenches, never done Building shit like that. real brands. Building real brands. And, uh, and it's really interesting to just kind of like overcome that, I guess. And it's also too like a no-brainer because realistically, if you want to make money – like, what's the most important thing to make money? It's like marketing and sales, right? Like, and on the internet, it's traffic. Yeah. Traffic to your offer. Yeah. And we have an unlimited traffic. Source. Unlimited traffic. But, yeah. but um, I think on. But it's just making the decision to change the scale of like not being known as like this good personal trainer, but like actually be known as a marketer, an entrepreneur, a salesman. Yeah. And it's, it's just like a, in a very authentic way though. I would yeah. say that's, that's one of the differences that we have. I mean, there's definitely people out there that are authentic, mm-hmm. but people, anyone that sells a course gets looked down on for whatever yeah. reason or coaching of some regard. Uh, but our coaching is really, at least for, for me, it's an extension of our agency. We were going to do it with you or without you. Yeah. You obviously bring a big piece to the team in terms of the coaching aspect and, yeah. and, and whatnot. And we can use your results as well to yeah. help sell the product, but we were going to do it regardless because it's just an extension of our agency. If you don't fit our agency, we're going to just put it's, you into it's, coaching. It's kind of funny uh, how it came about too. Just like when I, I remember calling you like, yo, what do you think about this? And, and I was like, like, I've been thinking about this. Yeah. It was a funny conversation, but let's, I don't want to one, don't, one more point. It's very interesting how things come full circle. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're watching the YouTube I mean, maybe you're on Spotify, but if, you're, if you're watching the YouTube, you can see behind me the clothing rack with the driven clothing. Very and strategically placed. <laughs> I, I, it looks cool. It's, it's just that it, 
it's <laughs> aesthetic. But um, that it's kind of come full circle because I started with e-com. Mm-hmm. Then I moved into building brands and traffic and whatever and driving that traffic. And now it's come full circle of like we're back at e-com again. But yeah. we just this time we just know exactly what we're doing. We have a good offer and it's super it's just super cool. It just comes yeah. full circle. It's yeah, you and I have both like done everything. Um I don't know if I would say everything. I've dabbled in everything. But I would e- say either, we've done either like <laughs> either built it myself or marketed it. I, we, marketed we've it and done sold the, it for other people. We've done the big things. Like, where it's like e com. At least on the internet. We've e-com, done all the internet models. E com, agency, sales, um, coaching. Oh, coaching pretty, courses. Yeah, pretty much uh, been in the main internet software. stuff. Yeah. So you've, you haven't owned software, but you've sold it. I've been a part of software. Like we've seen all these different we know, models yes. and had some aspect of success. In yes. Them. And sometimes we forget that and we yeah. kind of, we have this frame of, oh, like, I don't know if someone could take value from this. Like, should we sell something like this or whatever? Or should we even put out advice or anything on a podcast? And like we said in the first episode, we don't want to put advice out there. Like, mm-hmm. this is what you should do. But we'll put advice out there in terms of, you know, if, if it was me starting over. Well, dude, it's it's also like, I got so many messages yesterday about the first one. Yeah. And people are like, dude, this is so helpful. Just like hearing how it actually kind of works. Because and people aren't authentic. They they make it well, seem like there's a magic secret, whatever. And, and there is no magic. And we talked secret. about that. But it, it, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's really vindicating. And also like, it would be selfish to not. Agreed. share the experience Agreed. and if it can help one person then like fuck anyone else who's like a, some fucking dingleberry <laughs> wor- opinions worthless anyway so so that brings us to the point of okay so we talked about us we talked about how we got here i think all of that can help someone that's listening it's yeah. great um hope you enjoyed it but the next part of that is what would we do if we were restarting this what would we do if we were in that same position back in college what what's the first step we would take? I kind of have an idea of what I would do, but I want to hear more of what you're thinking. Yeah. So, man, what would I do if I were 19 again and broke and I needed to make cash? Well, I think number one, like you have to, like, I know for me, one of the, like, it took me so much longer than it could have. Same. So, so much, much longer. longer. <laughs> There's so much wasted time. Um, and there's a few things that I would say I would do. Um, number one, man, like I think if you can know yourself, if I, if I would have known myself and known like really what I actually wanted to be doing, because there were so many times I jumped around with things, right? I did this, then I tried that, then I did this, then I switched to that, right? And the, all of that time jumping around, like if I would have just picked one thing and know myself well enough to pick the one thing that actually is going like don't I shouldn't have done things because I wanted to you know have a four million dollar Shopify screenshot in a fucking huracan and a this and that and whatever like all the stupid shit I should have done the things that I actually like loved doing you know mm-hmm. because if I would have done that from the jump man like I would be so much further ahead um and I think that that knowing yourself too requires you to like, you know, if you don't have, if you, if you're starting from ground zero, you don't have, you know, salary saved up to deploy or you don't have money, you know, you're not, mm-hmm. you don't have capital from anywhere. You probably need to start some sort of a service and get, you need a service. So you, you need to leverage your time because you don't have money. You need a service or an need, audience and you need cash flow. I would say you need a service or an audience. The two of the fa- fastest possible growing things. Yeah, that's I, I would true. say those are the two options if you're a beginner. And I would say you should get a job first. 100%. That's the hundred percent. If you're, if I'm back into my shoes, boom, job first. And I, wh- what I should have done is, and looking back, this is always the the move. And I've really fully realized this in the past like four to six months. It's to move faster. You need to move with way more speed. Mm-hmm. That summer that I was going into college after I graduated high school, I knew deep down subconsciously, I knew that I was not going to enjoy it. If we really look back at it, I knew it wasn't going to be a fit. What I should have done is not gone to college 
and then jumped right into trying the online stuff, trying sales, trying to get a job somewhere that's real, something tangible in the real world yeah. faster. Mm-hmm. Just move faster. Try to get it faster. And I think looking back as well, uh, I kind of played in this middle ground in 2018 and 2019 where I could have acquired dozens more pages. Yeah. could have started the agency earlier. I could have tried different things. We could have put in sales systems way earlier in the agency. We could have probably made 10x more money mm-hmm. by this time if I just moved faster. So looking back, that's kind of, you know, yeah. when I was already started and when I was just starting, that's kind of the, the play of do it fat, like take, take action. Like, now if you have the, the idea yeah. a lot of people sit around and it's kind of in the middle ground and they don't really know where they want to go yeah and you're not going to know until you try something yeah and it's funny how the like the Pareto pr- principle kind of functions with that too the people dick around doing or i did i dicked around doing so much stupid shit learning like you know you need to find the thing that like kind of hurts a little bit and do that because if you're doing that it's car probably, sales it's probably <laughs> it's probably yeah. the right thing to do and also too like I think I look back on it. Um, I think I did a really good thing by working for the the people that I did. I learned a fucking ton so fast, got exposure to just like, wow, this is like how this works, you know? Mm-hmm. And, that, um, and that's where I think selling services and being an agency is one of the fastest ways to grow as a business owner because you don't want to have an agency forever. Yeah. An agency doesn't scale forever, but working for successful businesses or working together as a partner you know, with successful businesses at an agency is super, super helpful in terms of you get to see the insides of what they're doing yeah. or working as a salesperson for successful businesses. Okay. I understand this. I want to be an entrepreneur though. Let me break down this process. Okay. How can I replicate something for myself? So, and that, I think that's one of the most important things is that you never, you don't grow yourself to a standard or a level of success where, you know, things start happening for you. That's not really how it works. What, how at least it works in my experience is you actually get it, you get it, you see it, you get a taste of it. And then you like, you acclimate yourself to it. Yes. Right. A perfect example is us helping our clients sell coaching and courses. Dude, when we first started, it was 2019 and it seems like you guys just had alpha on IG growth and you had leverage because you had the assets. And, our first client, we got him to 50K in a month. And I'm like, dude, 50K in a month? We just helped. But we didn't get a single. I mean, we got a piece of it, but we didn't get like anything that mattered. You yeah. know, it's a small, small percent. At that time, it was. And that really starts to wake you up to this is possible for me to do. Mm-hmm. How can I do my own business? And now we're here to a point where I, I'm comfortable selling my own coaching because we have so much experience doing it for others so exactly what you were saying yeah and i i think about too like the pitfalls of what i would avoid looking back on it i i also think like dude the first year i dropped out of college i didn't see anyone like and it's so funny because you and i talk about like you talk about like you know locking yourself in or like working all the time i built an office in my parents basement (laughs) right it was the only extra room in the house like that could build something uh, built an office in there and locked myself in there for a year while I was selling cars and did drop shipping and e-com and built IG pages. See, but I, I look back on that, what I did and not, I wouldn't do anything. I went out with the coworkers at the gym, like maybe a few times and hung okay. out a few times. The first year didn't see anybody, bro. Like nobody wouldn't waste any time. The only thing I would do outside of it is I would go like maybe smoke some pot I'd roll a Dutch and go walk in nature for like six hours in the sun. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I look back on that and I think it was a, a really stupid mistake because I also think it, it kind of feed, fed into me just mentally masturbating about what I wanted. And it doesn't really like people do all these other things when in reality, what you need to do is, or what I should have done is sit down for fucking three hours every single day and make sure I'm moving the needle. Like, am I actually moving the needle? What What is the next domino that has to fall for more to fall? Um, and I would change that. Um, man, I wish I was. I wish I was building audience sooner because it's just it's dude, just so much leverage. Like, yes, now, I now I could start anything. I instantly have a small fucking basket 
pro mm-hmm. basketball stadium full of people that care what I have to say. Mm-hmm. Like, it's huge, bro. I, I agree to a point. I do think there's a, a gotta, point of – You got to earn your dues. You need, your yeah, you have to bit. have something to offer. Yeah. There's a lot of people that you, we can say, hey, go build an audience, but they don't really have anything to offer. And they might be successful with it to a, to a, to a degree – they get exposed because they try and do a little too extra, try and kind of like, I did this and this when they didn't. Mm-hmm. So that's something you really got to be careful of. If you're going to build an audience and you're going to give advice or that type of thing as an audience builder, not not like an entertainer or whatever, that's different. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to build an audience as an advice giver, to be really careful about giving advice that you have experience in and provable results in and not something that you're just kind of making up and whatever. Yeah. For sure. And I think that comes down to two, like the, what I said about just knowing yourself. Um, and cause if you do that, like that's, that's one of the biggest things that I think held me back is not cause I, even when I dropped out, like I kind of disbanded that, uh, opinion of others that were like, Oh, he's doing this, doing that. But I was still like guarding myself from really shooting after what I want. Cause I was scared. I guess I would fail or whatever. Um, and I think that too, all of these problems solve themselves. If you really pick like what it is you want to do and you commit to it fully, because then you have to like put in the work and do it, so to speak, you know, and you kind of eliminate that like results or expose, but you're actually doing the thing, you know, Mm -hmm. you just have that one single thing, um, let, we have about 10 more minutes. Okay. Let's let's bring it back to, let's fully answer the question of what you would do as a beginner just starting. Again, I think I would agree with you either build an audience, mm-hmm. entertainment style, something like that. You get followers, you build theme pages, whatever. Or you start an agency service-based business. Or, I think there's a third one I would add, is you start learning how to sell. I think those are the three main options. Um, because selling is... That's probably, that's probably selling is the pro- If I were to start again, that's probably what I would do. Yeah, because I'm a natural, like good at that. And it, you just learn so fast. You yeah. can see the inside of businesses, but and don't you can profit fast. Yes, and and but don't also like get into that. But remember that there's still you. You clearly left college. You clearly you're not doing it just to be a salesperson. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So don't for, like use the money there. Don't forget about the vision that you have and use. That's that's what I would tell myself is learn. Okay. Get the money sales. Probably pick a different sales path, though, if I were myself. Something that's much easier to sell because mm-hmm. it's easier to get money that way and you probably learn just as much. But use that money again to start building the vision that I had. And that's pretty much what I did. I just wish I went faster. I just wish I just did it faster and overcame the humps faster. Yeah, that's, that's probably pretty close to what I would do, to be honest. Um, I mean, obviously I have the fitness stuff like, and that's just a part of me, you know, I love it. I'm Mm a nerd about it. Um, so yeah, if I, dude, it's so funny because I could have like had everything that I have right now, like, I don't know, mid 2020, if I just like had this singular focus, okay, I'm going to get an internet sales job for the next five months stack cash, start posting content, learn how to acquire personal training clients and rip it. Exactly the same. I mean, I'm not obviously not the same scenario, but I could have had it way faster. (laughs) It's funny to think about, but going forward, it's a good lesson to to learn. I also think for, for anyone listening to this too, like there's probably, I would assume just based on our audiences, whatever, there's probably a lot of young guys Early twenties, I imagine. Early twenties, late <clears throat> teens mm-hmm. that are like listening to this and they want to figure this stuff out too. And I would also tell them and something that I would have would tell myself if I could speak to nineteen year old Logan, um, is like don't beat yourself up either. Because dude, I also think like all these things that we're saying that we regret made us exactly who we are today hundred percent and and you kind well, of need it you definitely need it because i'll see people that succeed succeed really fast and something like you know especially in the internet space it's something like the lockdowns and i don't know how much we can really talk about that on youtube to a degree before they shut us down so yeah. i'll just call it lockdowns but that accelerated 
a lot of growth for people in the internet space that had businesses that would not have accelerated if it weren't for that. And they skipped steps that are vital learning processes. Mm -hmm. And now that things kind of get a little bit rough, they're going to experience incredible imposter syndrome and they're going to struggle because of it. So the, the thing is, if you get a shortcut and you experience a shortcut and you, you have something like that, I think it's very, you have to keep in mind that that success from a shortcut, because that's a shortcut that what happened is yeah. you're skipping steps in the process. That is something that could hurt you and you have mm -hmm. to be very aware of it. I think that this is, I'm really, really glad you brought that up. Because I think that point to if I'm trying to tell myself what I would tell my when I was younger, right, or if I were starting again, or what I could tell someone else that's actually useful, and I think this will maybe sum it up better than anything, it's like master your craft. Because whether or not you get there or you don't get there or how fast you get there, if you're fucking good at something, mm -hmm. you will always win, period. Yes. If you get it, good it, at the thing, like you make, you put that above yourself. Or your company. Your company gets good at the thing. Well, if, I mean, if you're starting out, you can't, your company can't be good at the thing without you being I, good at the thing. Yes. Okay. I, I'm thinking a little bit bigger. Continue. Yeah. Like just whatever it is, you know, just putting, putting, building the, the tangible foundation of you being worth of value to a marketplace and committing to that, like whatever you're doing, because then it always is, it's always leverageable. It always compounds. Um, that's probably the easiest, like ad advice I would have given myself. It's just keep, keep mastering, keep mastering, move with speed. And okay. First, get a job that's going to give you money yeah. sales. Okay. Second, start something could could be an agency, whatever along the lines. Master skill that that is that you're selling. Um, move with move with speed, and then always remember. I think the fourth point is always kind of remember where you started and came from, mm -hmm. because it's very easy to master your craft, put in a team that work does it for you after you get super successful, and then you didn't work on it. You didn't work on your craft for a year, and then boom, you got problems. Because something happens in the market, something is going bad here. Don't forget where you came from after you have some of your success. Because going back to the basics, and we talked about this last episode, going back to the basics really is what propels you. And as long as you're continuing to do the basics, you will continue to grow. Yeah, and it's really interesting even just to think about like all the shit that I've learned talking about this. You know, um, that we learn about ourselves just. Sitting here talking, it right yeah, now and discussing it. It's really interesting, mm. and I think it helps us, you know, too. And it's obviously someone listening to this. I hope they enjoy it. Yeah. But this as well is almost for us in a way because it helps us remember things. Because you, we have these conversations a lot, but they always tend to go a little bit more high level, and we probably wouldn't talk about them on a podcast because most people couldn't relate to it. But when we kind of keep it in a way that is relatable and not super, super specific to exact problems that we're working on. Yeah. And that's what I mean when I say high level is like, yeah. how do I build a sales CRM and zap this in and yeah. whatever. How do we completely automate our CRM? Right. That's a little bit, a little bit different. Yeah. Um, boring. Yeah. But this, this helps us kind of go back and learn and remember, okay, what we did and re-implement some of those things back into our current businesses to make them better. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, I think us getting maybe more tactical on some later, like we plan on talking about business a lot. I think it's important as well to set the tone mm -hmm. and set the narrative of who we are. hundred percent. And because most people have heard it. I've talked about it on some other podcasts with people from the same space. I've talked about it in like real clips and some YouTube videos, whatever that I've yeah. put up. This is the but most in-depth. This is the most in-depth thing. We've recorded this before long time ago about a year ago but things have changed since then and this is probably the most most in-depth version we've recorded and are about to put out yeah yeah and it'll be fun to uh get into some more actionable stuff mm -hmm. too i think we're gonna go with health and fitness fitness uh, fitness i don't know why i said that health and fitness on the next episode um 
do you want to add anything to this? I think we're kind of wrapping it up. I think we covered everything that um, we wanted to. Man, I would just like, if I were listening to this, um, I would want to be reminded to, yeah, just stay focused. Um, try if you don't like number one, if you're going to do any sort of business, like try to get some equity, uh, ownership is more important than anything, I think, um, in this world and kind of, I get think it depends, but sure. If yeah. you're a beginner, go get the money first. Cause oh, you, yeah, you're broke. Of course, of course. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't have really any. That's a great, sad. that's a great second episode. Uh, Noah's over here sleepy. He's about to throw up on the he's couch watching us. Today. Uh, but he's going to close some deals later. So that's cool. Yeah. We got Ben over here being an idiot. But good job, Ben. We like you. Uh, camera right, set let's, up. Let's wrap this up. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in episode three, health and fitness. Yep. Coming up after Link, this. Links in links the description. description whatever. Anything. Blah, blah, blah. You guys know where it is. Go buy something. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> oh, my God. My ass. <laughs> from this chair. <laughs>